Hey guys and welcome to the first episode of the series. If you don't know, we're recreating the plants from Plants vs Zombies in Blender and today we'll be starting with the simplest plant, which is the Sun Shroom. Again, I'll try to make this as easy as possible so even people who only know the basics of Blender can follow the tutorial. Enjoy. Before we start modeling, we really need to find a reference image because our memory is not perfect and we won't know why something looks off. So in your browser of choice, you just click on the link in the description, which should bring you to this page. And you just accept the cookies, and then you scroll down until we find our sun shroom. So it's this one, which we're gonna make. We're gonna start with this because it has the simplest shape, and this series is gonna progress from easy to hard. So you just right click and save image as. So once you've saved the image onto your computer, you can just drag and drop into Blender You'll have it in Blender, and to get it centered, you just tap Alt-G and Alt-R, which resets the location. And every time I click something, you can see in the bottom right corner down here. And then you rotate it by 90 degrees around the x-axis with RX90. And now we have our image in here. Let's move it back with G and then Y, just a bit so it's not in the way. And now we can start modeling. I'll go into front view by clicking this or just tapping numpad1 and I'll add a circle. So mesh, circle, and then under add circle here, let's set it to eight because we'll, use, because we'll be using a subsurf modifier and we don't need that much geometry. So let's go into edit mode and fill the face with F and then in front view, position it at the bottom of this mushroom and scale it down until it matches. Now we can extrude with E until around the middle scale it up a bit, and then extrude again and scale it down. Now go out of edit mode and go to the modifier panel, subdivision surface. What this does is it basically smoothens the object by adding more geometry in between the vertices. I'll set both the viewport and render to three. Back in edit mode, I'll add a loop cut with control R, which acts as a proximity loop. So let's just move it all the way down until it nearly touches it. And then let's also inset this face with I to get it even sharper. You can move this edge by selecting the edge select here or just pressing two. And then you can alt click on an edge to select the whole circle. Now we can move it with GG. And the reason why we press GG is because if you just press G and then Z, it actually stays exactly the same size. And as you can see, it messes up our line here. So GG and then just move it up a bit. And now we have our nice rounded corner here. Now we're gonna make the top part. Extrude this top face and then right click and click S. Now, if we move this down, it might look weird for a second, but when we extrude this up again, everything will be fine. From front view, we can align everything until it matches the reference image. And that's it for the modeling. Now let's move on to the shading. This is probably also a good time to save. To do this, go to File, Save, and then save your project where you want it. We're gonna shade this by texture painting. What this means is that we basically draw the colors onto the object. To start, we go to the UV editing workspace and you probably won't see anything. The first thing you want to do is, the first thing you want to do is check this button here. Then, with everything selected, tap U, Smart UV Project. Now increase this margin by two or three clicks and click OK. What this does is it takes our object that's three-dimensional and cuts it so that it unfold it and project it on a 2D surface. This means that each of our 3D faces has a face on this 2D UV map. This is needed because when we draw, we can't actually draw on the 3D object, but our colors are actually stored on the 2D image, and this just projects it back onto the original object. Now we can create a new texture, which we call Sun Shroom Base Color. I'm gonna increase this resolution to 2048, because as we're drawing on an image, it does have pixels, and you can't change this after. So I think 
2K by 2K is a good resolution to start with. Now we, if we look at the rendered view, we still can't see anything. To have this color map affect our object, go to the shading workspace and create a new material. Let's call this Sunshroom and then add an image texture. Now click on this dropdown and select the image we just created. Now we have our material set up. Let's go to texture paint and now we can dra start drawing. If I start drawing on the object, you'll see that stuff's showing up and it's changing the color. What we want to do is make the top yellow and the bottom white and then draw the details onto it. To do this, I'm going to select the bucket tool so we can easily fill large areas and then click on this color field which selects what we fill it with and then use the eyedropper to select a yellow here. I'm going to click on the object to make everything yellow and I feel like this color is slightly off so I'm just going to try one more time. That's much better. Another thing I'm doing here is I'm not in the solid view, but I'm actually in the viewport shading view so that the colors are more accurate. Now we want to make this bottom stuff white. Again, go to the eyedropper and select this white. What we want to do now is fill these areas, but as it's all one object, we have to do it separately here. So I'm just going to click on these and you see one of them was the wrong part of the mesh. So I'm just going to undo that with control Z and I know I can't click on this. So this is also incorrect, so let's do these. And now we should have everything at the bottom white. Cool, that's it for the base colors. So our next step is to add the dots. But instead of filling now, we want to use the paint brush. So select that, and again use the eyedropper to select one of the circle colors. One shortcut is instead of clicking and then going on the eyedropper, you can just hover over the field and tap E. Now that we have the color, we can just draw on the object. Your file might be slightly different, but for mine right now, I have symmetry enabled. So just scroll down to symmetry and make sure nothing is enabled. Also make sure your fall off because usually it's on custom, which gives this smooth fall off. Change it to constant so you get a sharp fall off. Now we can just add dots of different sizes. To change the paint size, you just tap F and then drag your cursor and tap to select that size. And to draw, of course, you also just left click. So I'm just gonna add a couple of dots of different sizes around the mesh. You want to make sure that you don't click the mesh as an angle or else you'll get these distorted circles. So always do it straight on. Now that we have this top done, let's move on to the eyes and the mouth. Again, use the eyedropper to select the black, but as we know that this is complete black, I'll just do it manually and set the value to zero. Right now, you'll notice that if we draw a very thin line, we'll only have it on one side and it's not very straight. So to fix the symmetry, just go to symmetry and check the right axis. In this case, it's X because we're drawing on one side of the X axis and we want it mirrored to the other. So now if we draw, it's on both sides. And then what we also want to do is to get the straight lines, go to stroke and change it from dots, which allows you to do any shape to line, which makes you have one straight line from where you started by dragging and then letting go. Now let's go into front view and also wireframe so we can see through the object. Change your brush to the same size of the eye and then click and drag from the top to the bottom. What you'll see now is that we have the two eyes. Now let's do the same thing for the mouth. So click and drag and then let go and you'll have the mouth. And then let's do the same thing for these small parts, but there we go. So that's it for the object. We're done texture painting. Now let's just do the final tweaks to the material. I'll decrease the roughness to around 0.3 and then increase the specularity to 0.7. The specularity just affects how bright the reflections are and the roughness how sharp. So I'll just change this back. And that's basically it for the modeling and shading. I'm just going to show you how to add this outline very quickly. First, I'll show you the long method, which involves making everything manually. But there's also a free add-on that I'll show you that does it all automatically and makes it work in cycles as well. So the first step is to go into your modifiers and make sure you apply scale with control A of your object. Then 
add a solidify modifier and set the thickness to something negative like minus 0 0.07 which will make the object thicker. Uncheck fill rim and flip the normals. Then under material set the material offset to 1. Now add a new material and make a new one. Name this outline and then in the shading workspace you can delete the principal to SDF and replace it with an emission shader. Set this to complete black. One thing you need to make sure is that you have EV enabled because this only works in EV. So check back face calling and you should have your outline. To get the add-on, you go to the link in the description, which is a Gumroad page, and then you just enter a fair price. Of course, you can get it for free by just typing in zero, but this is such a useful add-on that donating $1 is very kind. Then you just enter your email address, and then you just go to view content, and download outline helper one underscore one. Back in Blender, you go to edit, preferences, add-ons, install, and then you just locate your file and double click on it. It should pop up like this. So what you wanna do is just take the box and save preferences. Now, I'll delete this very quickly just to show you how fast it is with that with the add-on. So just open the sidebar with N and then go to your outline helper and add outline. Now you can tweak this, the thickness here and you're already done. And the cool thing with this outline is it also works in cycles. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next tutorial.